Hi everyone, today I want to share a quick and simple graduation card. I need a few this year and I thought I'd make some. I saw an idea for just a basic background like the, the numbers here on uh, Pinterest and then I thought I wanted to add a little hat so I'm kind of combining a few ideas. I thought I would share it because it's really quick and simple. Um, the number dies are discontinued but a lot of us have them around so I thought I'd share it anyway and hopefully uh, maybe you have some other kind of number dies that you can use. I want to share a tip on how to get the most out of your glimmer paper without um, having too much trouble cutting things apart and making it really simple. And uh, the hat is really simple as well. So I'm going to make it really fast for you and hopefully you can use a graduation card and you can use it year after year. Just change your numbers. I'm starting with a piece of basic black cardstock. This is cut in half and then scored. So it is um, eight and a half by five and a half and then scored at the four and a quarter line. And then I've got a piece of glimmer paper in gold, and this is three and a quarter by five and a half. I've also got a piece of whisper white, and this is five and a half by two and three quarters, which is going to give you this nice edging around here. But we're going to cut our numbers out from behind, and that's good for a few reasons. Um, we're gonna, it's going to give us good adhesive when we glue it down because we've got some places where the paper can contact paper. Sometimes it's hard to glue on top of um, glimmer paper because of the glitter on top of the paper. Also, it just saves on some, you know, the glimmer paper because we're using up since it's behind the card anyway. And you could cut little strips instead, but this lays nicely and um, it's just simple. It's just more easy. <laughs> so we're going to do it this way. And we're going to layer those down. I'm going to cut out the numbers. If you don't have glimmer paper, another good option is gold foil. And you can do the same thing with your gold foil and just cut out your numbers there. Okay, I've got my numbers cut out. And you can see I did a 2020. I have um, a few of the 2019 and I have all that I need. So I thought I might as well make a 2020 for next year. I know I'm going to need some. My son, in fact, graduates in 2020. So I'm going to use some multi-purpose liquid glue for this. I like it because I can shift the um, numbers on the Whisper White piece if I need to. And I can get in and get this down really well. Okay, now here if you want, you can add some ribbon around the bottom. I used some basic black baker's twine, which I'm running out of, I noticed. <laughs> And they're not going to carry Baker's back, basic black Baker's twine in the next catalog. So I went ahead and grabbed another roll of this, but I don't have it yet. So for one, we'll use it, and for another, we'll use some other black ribbon. Do you ever find it hard to tie some Baker's twine? What I like to do sometimes is I put a little glue dot under the initial knot just to kind of hold it tight to the card. So I will, but I kind of ball it up so it's not so big. <laughs> and I place it right under where I not want my knot to be. And then it holds it down. And then that way my fingers are free to continue tying. And I don't have loosey-goosey um, string because it's really tight and nice. Now attaching something on top of glimmer paper can sometimes be difficult because of the glitter like I mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and use the liquid glue and that really will help adhere on all that little pieces of glitter. And I'm going to put some on the cardstock. So I've got cardstock on cardstock contact as well. Okay, to attach my letters I'm also going to use that same liquid glue. I like to lay them out and kind of get my center ones done first. And because I already tied my ribbon here, my baker's twine, it kind of helps give me a straight line to work off of. You can always do that at the end, but I think it's nice to have that straight line. <laughs> I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to stick a little block on top. 
And while that dries, we'll make the hat. The hat is made with the tailored tag punch. And we punch out a base. But see how it has these squared edges on it, which we don't want. So you're going to go ahead and stick a post-it note on it and put it back inside the punch. And the post-it note is just so you can move it around. And you want to move it so that you get rid of that straight edge. There. Now you can freehand cut it, but this is nice because you've got perfect uh, lines and I love paper punches. Okay, and now for the bottom part of the hat, I've always made it with a heart. Now I've seen many different hats made many different ways, but I like the little line of this heart. And I've used also butterfly punches and other things like that for this kind of curved look. Um, so you can see, look through your punches and see what you have. I like the heart, this tiny little scrap here. And that kind of gives this shape. I need two. So you might have an old butterfly punch that has this kind of shape on the wing or um, I don't know, just look through what you have or if you have heart dies, those work nicely too. Or try and freehand something or even use a circle punch and just do two circle punches next to each other. You can use a uh, circle certainly for the same idea. Next I'm going to use my pokey tool from the take your pick tool and I'm going to punch a hole directly in the center of my hat top. Okay, so for the hat, we're going to use some of this kind of fun tinsel cord. This is currently on the Stampin' Up! clearance rack, so you can grab some of this right now. And it's really inexpensive. And you just need a tiny bit. And you're going to poke it through that hole. And take your finger and just fray it. And you don't even have to fray it a lot. You just want to fray it a little bit to give the idea that this is many strands, like a graduation. Uh, I don't even know what that's called anymore. It's been so long since I graduated. A little uh, ribbon thingy, like so. And then you're going to use a dimensional. And a dimensional is nice here because you want to give that illusion of, you know, that it's a hat and it's not flat. So I use the dimensional to do two things. One, it glues down this little, um, what is that, the mortar board? Help me out. <laughs> what are the names of this cap? Um, it's going to help hold that down. And then it also sticks up from the uh, part that goes on the head so that it kind of gives the illusion that this is uh, a three-dimensional object. And if you want to use a glue dot to stick that to the side, you can. Now another thing I did here is I used a black brad through here to stick it down. Actually, this one is not, but this one is a black brad, and you can't tell the difference. Um, I ran out of black brads at stamp camp or at card buffet, so we started using a few different things. We used black pearls, and we stuck that on top, and we have another one of those, so I can do that and show you how that looks. And that gives that illusion of a little buttony type thing there. And then we're just going to stick that onto the 2 in the 2020. And again, you can use a dimensional if you want. And you want to make sure you stick within the fold line because you don't want this to not fit in an envelope. There you go. But because it's black on black, and maybe it's hard to see on film, uh, film but giving it that dimensional lifts it off this background so you really do see it. Um, if you had it maybe glued flat without the dimensional, it would kind of fade into the background here, and you wouldn't really see that that hat is there. So that's really fun. Now let's see how this one would look. I haven't made a foil one yet. This is kind of my experiment. Okay, for this one, I'm using some black shimmer ribbon that I had laying around. And I will put that down. And I did it kind of, I guess, a faux bow. I just stuck it down with some glue dots because I don't have a lot of it left. <laughs> and I was afraid I would run out. I need to replenish my black. I was waiting to see what was in the new catalog before replenishing a lot of my ribbons. So I'm going to tie this 
like so. The nice thing about doing it this way is that you can kind of move this little knot anywhere. If you want it towards the left, towards the right, you can slide it. If you're like me, you've always got little strips of Whisper White laying around. So that's what I used for my time to celebrate. And it's from the Itty Bitty Birthdays stamp set. When I make a little um, flag at the end, sometimes I just go straight up the middle and then meet the middle from either side to make that little flag end. And that works nicely right on top of the baker's twine. From the same stamp set, I found another one that says, let's celebrate you, which works nicely for graduation. I also looked through my stamp sets and I found some that were congratulations. And you can look through your stamp sets and see what you have. A little off to the side, I might redo that. <laughs> so, time to celebrate. And I think that uh, Itty Bitty Birthdays and Itty Bitty Greetings are great stamp sets to have. You've got um, some good combinations in there. There's a congratulations and the itty bitty greetings, but it's kind of small, but you can use that on the front if you have itty bitty greetings. And if you have itty bitty birthdays, you can do the time to celebrate or let's celebrate you goes on the front. Cheers to you. So exciting. There's some great ones on there for graduation. So which do you like better, the glimmer or the foil? I kind of think the glimmer. Anyway, show me your graduation cards. I have a Beth's Paper Cuts Idea Sharing Group on Facebook where you can share what you're doing this year for graduation and you can um, post your cards. We can all get ideas and inspiration from each other. You can find that on Facebook and just put in the little search bar Beth's Paper Cuts Idea Sharing Group. I'd love to see what you're doing and if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, I would love to be yours. I give out a frequent buyer rewards program where you can earn free stamps and I always send a hand stamp thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!